I am really excited to see The Modern, a Michelin two-star restaurant. The setting acts like a gallery room with the chefs using the kitchen to create edible artwork. You enter into a curved wall of light to meet the maitre d', and it immediately opens into a room called The Bar that serves an excellent a la carte menu and is one of the few Michelin-starred restaurants serving a restaurant week menu. Our reservation was in the main dining room, showcasing a seasonally changing tasting menu. Comment below if you can guess how many plates were served. In between dishes, we enjoyed looking through the three-story high wall of glass that overlooked the Abbey Aldrich Rockefeller Sculpture Garden. Shortly after we settled at our table, the muse bouche made with peaky toad crab over a savory apple basil tapioca sauce laid on top of an oyster cracker covered under a canopy of a single green oyster leaf sitting on top of a bed of Himalayan red rice crispies. This combination actually tasted like an oyster. Originally, the bed of crispies was not supposed to be eaten. However, I had to try. This starter was refreshing and that leaf reminded me of Claude Monet's Water Lilies. This was a great way to start the evening. Before continuing down the menu, we received our Zero Proof drinks, also known as non-alcoholic. The tall glass had a hint of grape flavor from the Pinot Noir, while the tumbler had a smoky yuzu flavor. Both were very subtle, different, and refreshing that reminded me of Marcel Duchamp's bicycle wheel like drinks were meant to spin. The first official course was called Eggs on Eggs on Eggs, a fried egg sauce as a base. Then on top of that was a poached hen egg, and then those eggs were covered by a salty popping Cherenki caviar. You eat this combination with the help of a toasted brioche finger, and we even got an extra finger to swipe up the last of the mixture. In fact, we did not use the mother of pearl spoon. Joan Moreau's Dutch interior came to mind because of the image of the egg in her painting. The second course continues the story. Underneath the grated white truffles is hermasa, a yellow jacked amber fish is layered over English peas, pickled strawberry, and foie This combination of earthy truffles and fish balanced well bringing together land and sea. The truffle topping was like Jackson Pollock's one, number 31, in 1950, and underneath has layers of complexity. Before the next course is served, here is the bread service. We had a very uniform cake-like crumb, really fluffy, with tight air pockets, and a tasty developed crust. The Normandy butter was super creamy, decadent, and sweet as if the flavors swirled around the palate, similar to Paul Signot's magical portrait of Felix. Moving to the next gallery comes the first lobster dish of the evening, a roasted lobster with glazed artichokes, brined olives, charred ramps, and a sauvignon sauce that was a rich, savory dish that you wanted to lick the sauce off the plate. We should have saved the bread to scrape every drop of sauce. This reminded me of the tree reaching into the swirls in the night sky leading to the moon in Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. How lucky are we to get another lobster dish with the tastiest and hardest to crack part of the lobster, the knuckle. Layered next to a two inch diameter, perfectly cooked cheese and potato filled ravioli and a green asparagus sprig. The smokiness of the cheese filling surprisingly left me wanting more like the complexity of Helen Frankenthayer's Jacob's Ladder. The last savory course from the kitchen was a dry-aged duck breast, cooked medium rare, grilled maitake mushrooms, broccoli flour, and cherries with a cherry reduction drizzle finished our non-sweet entrees, leaving us feeling satisfied, but still room for what is still to come. Ultimately, where did the time go? That reminded me of The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali, where time slipped away and prepared us for the dirt section of the dinner. Before the dessert, a counterbalance in a glass bowl filled with Sweet California's famous Harry's Berries Wild Strawberry Consomme topped with the tartness from the Cucumber Lime Granite acting as a palate refresher similar to Giacomo's Bella's Streetlight allowing us to see the path ahead and behind this delicious journey. For our final beverage, we went with the Gen Mecha green tea that was poured into a vacuum sealed glass cup that kept the beverage very hot. 
and a calming effect like Yves Klein's Blue Monochrome. Dessert one was a chocolate tort, crunchy almond praline wafer topped with vanilla ice cream. Now, who doesn't enjoy a sundae for a final treat? It was unique and familiar like Joseph Kazuth's one and three chairs. The next dessert plate was a mint chocolate ganache, mini Oreo cookie, and a candy made of passion fruit and lime caramel. It felt like different parts of my brain enjoying Andy Warhol's Campbell Soup collection. For bonus dessert, an anniversary cake with a candle to celebrate. It was made of light vanilla cake with a mandarin orange sponge center with a basil crostini on the outside, which was very light like a cloud packed with flavors, but not overwhelmingly too sweet, similar to Claude Monet's Reflections of Clouds on the Water Lily Pond. What other restaurants do you suggest to go and celebrate? Click here to check out my other Michelin-starred restaurant reviews.